His full name of Edson Arantes Nascimento was shortened to Pele during his school days when he kept mispronouncing the name of his favourite player, Bile. During his career, he made 666 club appearances and played for the Brazilian national team from 1957 to 1971, a total of 92 times. Pele was born on the 23rd of October 1940 in Tre Corazes in Brazil a city of around 70,000 people in the south of Minas Gerais, Brazil's fourth largest state. Before he found fame and fortune in the sporting world, Pelé grew up in poverty in Baru, Sao Paulo. As a youngster, he served in tea shops to earn extra money, but before long, the whole world would know him by the nickname he'd hated at school. I fight in the college with the, the kids because, no, my name is Edson, they call me Pelé. I get two days suspended in the school. Then everybody in the school, all the kids start to call me Pelé. I hate that time. <laughs> <laughs> Today I love, of course. <laughs> now I love because, uh, I don't know, God gave it to me. Short name, easy to pronounce it. Any language you can remember, Pelé. Pelé's talent was recognised early on by manager Waldemir de Brito, who took him to Santos Football Club for a tryout and told directors he would be the greatest football player in the world. Pelé made his debut for Santos on the 7th of September 1956. By the next season, he was given a starting place in the first team and became the league's top scorer at the age of just 16. He continued to amaze fans with his unrivaled ability as a forward. His most prolific goal-scoring season at club level was in 1958, when he racked up a tally of 66 goals. The world took notice, with wealthy European clubs eager to sign the young star. I, ha I had a lot of invitations, Real Madrid. I also, I also had, a, had a, that time, I was invited to be, um, uh, I say, shareholder from the, the Fiat. No, to come to play in Italy, and then I didn't. I didn't that time I didn't understand well uh, the business situation. I said no, no. I, I, I talked to Mr. Agnelli. No, no, no. I'm gonna stay in Santos. I didn't want to come. Along with other stars like Pepe, Zito, and Coutinho, Pele was part of a formidable team. Santos would win Brazil's top-flight league, the Campeonato Paulista, ten times during Pele's time at the club. In 1969, he achieved the amazing feat of scoring his 1,000th career goal. He dedicated it to the poor children of Brazil. So strong were Santos during Pelé's tenure that they also won the newly created Copa Libertadores, the South American club championship, as well as the Intercontinental Cup in both 1962 and 1963. Pelé was named top scorer of the Campeonato Paulista a total of 11 times and held the title for nine years straight, from 1957 to 1965. During his career at Santos, he scored 589 goals from 605 appearances over 19 seasons at the club. By 1974, the time came for Pelé to hang up his boots at Santos. After almost two decades of thrilling the crowds across the globe, it looked like the career of a footballing legend was at an end. However, the following year he came out of retirement to play for the New York Cosmos in the North American Soccer League. He was motivated by the chance for himself and his family to learn English. No doubt the prospect of the healthy paycheck also sweetened the deal. That time I have opportunity to learn English, to, to give opportunity to my, my family, my sons, my daughter to study English. Then I moved to the United States because of those, you know, proposed. But not only because uh, Cosmo paid me a little bit more than Santos. Pele's transfer to the Cosmos immediately sparked interest in the sport in the United States. Though well past his prime, he was the league's star attraction. In 1977, he ended his career with an exhibition match between the Cosmos and Santos in which he played one half for each side. He was happy to retire in good shape. Uh, you know, I feel very, very, very sorry because I love soccer. And uh, it's uh, like a uh, part of my life I, I lost. But 
uh, it's very important when you you stop in good shape, when you can't stop in good shape. Uh, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss a lot. I'm gonna be around, I'm gonna stay in, in, in a nice state. I ask to the coach if I can practice with the teammates sometimes. But uh, it's important you stop when you are in a good position, in the top of your career. I know I'm gonna miss, no doubt about it. And football would miss the player who made history at Santos and brought awareness of the beautiful game to the US. Some of Pelé's greatest exploits and achievements came while playing for his country. During his first international match in 1957, he scored Brazil's only goal in a 2-1 defeat against Argentina. Aged just 16 and nine months, he became the youngest player to score in international football. He played his first World Cup a few months later. Uh, my first World Cup, uh, no, I was 17 years old, you know, was a beautiful history because uh, uh, eight years before Brazil lost for Uruguay, the World Cup in the 50s. And my father was crying you know, with a lot of Brazilians there. And then uh, my father used to say, oh, man should be strong, man doesn't cry. Then I saw my, my father cry when Brazil lost the game. <laughs> then I told the father, no, don't worry, I'm gonna win one World Cup for you, don't worry. I was nine years, nine to 10 years old. Then eight years late, I was in, in Sweden with Brazil with 17 years old. The Brazil won the World Cup. That's a gift for God because I don't, I don't know why I, said, I, I, said, I promised to my father. Pelé's international career would prove even more impressive than his club record. He epitomized the unique so-called samba style of Brazilian football. He was lithe and agile. He had great balance and speed and amazing ball control. He appeared to have the ball on a string whenever he played. At the time of the 1958 FIFA World Cup, Pelé was the youngest player at the tournament and at the time, the youngest player ever to play in a World Cup. In the final, the first of his two goals was selected as one of the best goals in the history of the World Cup. Brazil easily won the final and Pelé had fulfilled his promise to his father. He injured himself early in the 1962 World Cup and was unavailable for the rest of the tournament. Although Brazil won the cup again, Pelé missed out on receiving a medal. After failing in 1966, Pelé lined up for Brazil again at the 1970 World Cup. They prevailed 1-0 in a spectacular game against England, before eventually beating Italy in the final and giving Pelé his second World Cup medal. His third medal came in 2007, when FIFA retrospectively awarded him the record honour to acknowledge his participation in Brazil's victorious 1962 campaign. But back in 1970, his World Cup career was coming to an end. I think one should know when to give up. I've been in the Brazilian team for a very long time. I've just turned 30, and I would never make the World Cup in Munich in 1972. I think if I was on the field, I'd be taking the place of someone who could be doing well for himself. Pelé's international career lasted 15 seasons, spawning 77 goals from 92 appearances. With Pelé on the field, the Brazilian team racked up an incredible record of 67 wins, with just 14 draws and 11 losses. They also took out three World Cups. Pelé's talent was so revered that he became known as the king of football. But what Pelé achieved on the field, he has rivaled with his off-field activities. As well as taking on ambassadorial work since retiring from the game, he has also stayed closely involved with sport in various capacities. Away from the game, one of Pelé's major priorities has been his family. 
On the 21st of February 1966, he married Rosemarie Dos Reyes Colby, with whom he has three children. Kelly Christina, born in 1967, Edson, also known as Edinho, born in 1970, and Jennifer, born in 1978. They divorced in 1978, and Pele went on to marry psychologist and gospel singer Assyria Lemos Siexis in April 1994. With the help of fertility treatments, Assyria gave birth to twins Joshua and Celeste in September 1996. To this day, Pele remains devoted to the game that made him a superstar and willingly lends his legendary profile to promote good causes, such as the Great Ormond Street Hospital, Harlem Youth Soccer, The Littlest Lamb, and 46664. I try to make the people happy because I know everybody is the same in life, you know? Then I love the people, the people love me. Since retiring from football, Pele has also tried his hand at acting. He has made over 40 appearances as himself on numerous TV shows, films and documentaries. He has also acted in films like 1981's Escape to Victory, a movie about Allied prisoners of war. He also appeared in Hot Shot and A Minor Miracle, as well as many Brazilian productions. Most of his roles have involved showing off his impressive talents on the football field. His ease in front of the cameras has also made him a popular choice for documentary makers, looking for an expert opinion on all things football related. Pelé's film and television roles have not only served to boost his celebrity profile, but of course, he will always be best known for his ability as a footballer. 2004 saw the release of Pelé Eterno, a documentary charting the making and maintaining of a legend. My, my film, you know, I, I am very, very glad and you know, thanks to all the, you know, the, the crew, to all the team who work on that, because it was five years to put all together. I have a proof for the youngs, for the new generation, then, my grandson, when they grow, if they want to see something about uh, my life, I have the tape to show them, the goals, everything. Mm -hmm. This is the reason I call the Bible of Pelé. Yeah. Strangely enough, there have been no other documentaries on Pelé. It's a film who everyone can see, you know, because it's a film for sport, for the family who have emotion, you know. You have a lot of uh, material to, to produce a film. And I don't know why until now they didn't discover that. <laughs> but now, for example, my life, you know, I am very proud to be here in Cannes because uh, this is to talk about my life. It is a film about my life. The film brought him a new generation of fans. From the start of his playing days, Pele has battled with myopia. Although it didn't impede his career, it became a concern later in life. Pelé did not have any trauma. A trauma, a blow to the head, could cause a retinal detachment. But he has a history of being myopic, and myopics have a higher tendency to have retinal lesions. The worsening of his condition eventually led him to being confined to a wheelchair. The degree of myopia is the same in both eyes, and I can say he was a genius to have played the way he played with the degree of myopia he had. Pele's life post-retirement has been almost as eventful as his playing career, but the king appears to take it all in his stride. As a worldwide ambassador for football, Pele has appeared at many football functions and matches singing the praises of the game to crowds across the globe. He has also been Minister for Sports in Brazil, where his opinion on the game is always held in high regard. He is especially proud to promote the game to the youth of the world. Sport is the best thing to take the kids from the street, and then soccer is the big sport in the world. It's very cheap, and it's for poor people. Everybody can be there. That, I think, is the message. Every place they have a youth tournament, they invite me, and I stay there. 
você tira a criança das drogas. Então, é, um It's a pleasure to mais fácil. é por isso que todas as vezes que tem torneios infantis, juvenis, eu estou lá. Pode me convidar que eu estou indo. Promoting the game and sport in general to children the world over is a passion for Pelé. He hopes that introducing youngsters to the game will ignite a spark in them and keep them off the streets. I think the message that he's been delivering to the world since he's been playing the game, which is to respect the game, respect your opponent. Uh, he talks about the children of the world, which is what he wanted to leave the game to. He's coming to us to, you know, to touch us in a real special way, and we're excited about him being here. Pelé's next mission is to help improve conditions in his home country. Coming from a poor family himself, he believes the support for young kids in Brazil is not what it should be and aims to encourage the young kids to fulfill their dreams. I want to do the best for the sport in Brazil. My brother, they tease me, my brother, my friend, they say, no, you are a king before, now you are a minister, now you, you go back. <laughs> because uh, I think it's a time to, to do something. We have a you know, big potential in Brazil, but uh, the organization is not well. And we didn't have support for the, 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 the kids in the view. Then I want to try to change this uh, mentality. The only sports event that rivals the World Cup is the Olympics, and Pele was one of his country's ambassadors in Rio de Janeiro's bid to host the 2016 Olympics. He traveled to Beijing Olympics in 2008 in an attempt to drum up support for the bid. For my Brazilian friends, this is a very big responsibility for me, to represent Brazil here to help bring the 2016 Olympics. This is not just for Rio de Janeiro, but for all of South America. I hope we'll win this bid. We're moving forward. I'm so happy that I'm getting the same respect from people as before, even many years after I retired. Thank you. In late 2009, the International Olympic Committee announced that Rio's bid for the 2016 Summer Olympics from the 5th to the 21st of August had been successful. It marked the first time that South America had ever been chosen for the job, and the news was received with great jubilation by the host country. I think it was a time, you know, because, uh, first of all, because when it uh, uh, was applied some time ago, uh, I think Brazil was not prepared. And Brazil now is prepared. It's the, the, the one of the, the, the eight economy in the world. You know? And then the other thing is, after you have a lot of Olympic games in the United States, you know, uh, in Europe and, and in Central America, I think there are a moment to have the Olympic game in South America. And then Brazil are prepared for that. And Rio de Janeiro is in good time to prepare for that, no doubt. Okay. The Olympics will further Pelé's campaign to introduce kids in Brazil to sport. In the meantime, he will no doubt continue to plough his energy into the many great causes he supports. With his many achievements on and off the pitch, it was only a matter of time before the world's greatest ever footballer put his rags to riches story on paper. In May 2006, Brazil's most famous export travelled to England to launch his autobiography, simply titled Pelé. At central London's Virgin Megastore, he was met by hundreds of adoring fans, who were treated to a book signing with a difference. Not only did they receive a personalised copy of Pelé's book, they also got a taste of Brazil, with some exotic samba dancing. As Pelé happily signed autographs and posed for photos, one couldn't help but wonder if there was anything that he couldn't do. Despite the fame and fortune his many talents have brought him, Pelé has never neglected his fans. At the ready with a wave and a smile, he's always glad to sign an autograph or pose for a photo and has never let his status as a football legend go to his head. Since beginning his career over half a century ago, he has signed hundreds of thousands of balls, shirts and photographs. It's this dedication to his fans that has seen his fan base continue to grow around the globe. He has also inspired many young footballers to follow their dreams. Never forgetting his humble roots, 
Pele's generosity sets a great example for many modern day footballers, who often seem to care more about their bank balance than their supporters. Pele's generosity is constantly renewed with all kinds of different honours. In April 2002, an exhibition in Rio de Janeiro opened to pay tribute to the football legend. Titled Pele, the King's Art, the exhibition contained over 500 items from Brazil, New York and Paris. One of the show's feature items was a display of Pele's football cleats preserved in gold. At its opening, former player and manager Mario Zagallo spoke about Pele with much admiration. In fact, Pele represented everything in soccer because of what he has done on the pitch. Mario Zagallo played with Pele in the 1958 and 1962 World Cups and served as manager when the striker led Brazil to the third world title in 1970. As he walked through the exhibition, Mario would have noticed many magazines about Pelé, as well as all the different examples of Pelé-inspired artwork. The exhibition also included a shoeshine box made from fish skeletons, a symbol of Pelé's poor beginnings. I think that from the shoeshine box to now, God gave me this opportunity to be an example for children. From there, we can be a Pelé, or we will have many Pelés, if it's God's will here in Brazil. Roberto Amaral, who helped produce the exhibition, believes Pelé embodies the essence of the Brazilian people. The organisers of the exhibition were hoping to take Pelé the King's art all over Brazil. An exhibition in his honour is just one of the many tributes that Pelé has received over his incredible career. Others include being named Athlete of the Century in 1981 and 1999, as well as the FIFA Player of the Century in 2000. In March 2004, as part of FIFA's centennial commemorations, football's governing body staged the FIFA 100, which recognised the greatest 125 living footballers, as picked by Pelé. So to be honoured by someone like him is even more special. And uh, I think when you're talking about the, the list, it's, uh, it, it, and, and he, he didn't put it in sequence, so it's, it's, he's a special man as well. Held at London's Natural History Museum, footballers from all over the world attended. Fans were treated to an incredible gathering of past and present legends of the game. They included Franz Beckenbauer, Robert Perez, Patrick Vieira, Dennis Bergkamp, fellow Brazilians Ronaldinho and Cafu, Giancarlo Viali, and Japan's favourite son, Hidetoshi Nakata. Pele explained he had some help in choosing the FIFA 100. But uh, I think uh, you know, with the uh, support of some friend of mine, uh, some uh, coach uh, giving me some, uh, some advice, then we hit the point who I feel comfortable, I did my best. The FIFA 100 wasn't restricted to just male footballers. Pele also included Michelle Ackers and Mia Hamm, who have been at the forefront of developing the women's game. With three World Cups, 600 club goals and 77 international goals to his name. Pelé is without doubt Brazil's greatest ever footballer and perhaps the best the world has ever seen.